Oh, it's happy. Uh, it's happy and happy. <laughs> Hello. 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 No. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had your autograph. What's that? She'd like to, like to have your autograph. No, I said I haven't. Oh, well, I'll have to get you one of those. And look, it's a random. <laughs> <laughs> You're very random. Okay. Well, first of all, obviously, I want to thank you for giving us some of your time today. I really appreciate that. My pleasure. So, uh, this is Munchie. I'm to show you our puppy. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, very cute. What's your puppy? Do you have a puppy? Say, he wants to know what the puppy's called. Jimmy. Ginny. Hello, Jimmy. Ginny. Like Jennifer? Like oh, Jennifer Ginny. Goodson? Oh, Ginny. Yeah. Hello, Ginny. And she's such a mischievous puppy. You are, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. She, she's a, she loves once upon a time, don't you? Yeah. Would you like to ask some of your questions now? Who do you play in Hello Kitty? In Hello Kitty, I play a puppy dog named Inu Notion, and he's a ninja. Oh, how cool. <laughs> a ninja. A ninja puppy. A ninja yeah. puppy. And I've made up a phoenix story named Lily the Phoenix. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> how long have I made it up, Mummy? You've been telling me this story for years. No, I haven't. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Or well, maybe it just feels We've like written it. your questions down, right? Because we know you go a little bit off script sometimes. So what's your next question there, look? If you were a dinosaur for a day, what dinosaur would you be? That is a great question. Um, can I you what? can I be any dinosaur ever? Anything? Yes. I would be a mix of... I would be the child of a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops. That'd be um, a, a Centrosaurus with, um, with, um, with, um, with horns on its back. <laughs> That's exactly what I would be, and I would be it with pride. Well, mine is a, a little, um, my T-Rex is a green T-Rex with with yellow stripes on her back. She's got blue eyes, and her name is Lucy. Oh, Lucy! And a she's name for and her boyfriend is Finley, the grey Spinosaurus. Oh my goodness! And he's got green eyes. Well, you've got this all worked out now, don't you? Yeah, look, you've got that question now. Look, do you have any pets? I do. I have a kitty cat, and her name is Inanna, and I shave her to look like a lion. Amina. E Inanna. Inanna. Oh, that's a nice name. Thank you. She likes it. My friend Angie, who co-runs the website with me, she, she um, helped me come up with some questions. Okay. Um, so uh, she'd like to know, uh, what's been the best part of working on Once Upon a Time? The best part about working on Once Upon a Time would have to be... With, oh, there's so many. I, I have to be honest with you. Uh, truthfully, it's probably the people. Um <laughs> The cast and crew, I've worked on a lot of different shows in my career, and I have never been so fortunate to work with such amazing people. So I think what's really sweet about it is I think everybody really appreciates and respects the iconic characters we get to play and the mashup world. It's such a fantastic fantasy world where we get to play characters we all grew up with, and in this crazy mashup world, it's... As a child, you never would have fathomed that this would have been a possibility. So I think that's probably my favorite. Uh, so are we going to be seeing more of you in Series 3? Well, I have no idea. I sure as heck hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that um, I find out, truthfully, I find out when I'm going to be in episodes right after most of you do. Uh so I've read a couple articles recently that suggest that Seven Dwarfs, uh, with right now Belle is sort of left alone in uh, Storybrooke with mm -hmm. 
Blue Fairy, Granny, Geppetto, uh, Jiminy Cricket, The Seven Dwarfs. Uh, there's a couple of us left. But there's not a lot. So unless Belle is spending a lot of time by herself in the library, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully she mixes and mingles with us and we have a chance to start exploring more. Uh, Grumpy always seems to get lots of stuff and we're always happy when Lee gets a chance to do something on the show. He's a funny guy. <laughs> great guy. Super great guy. Okay, I've got um, several evil regals who would probably rip my head off if I didn't ask you what it was like working with Lana Priya. I think I think Lana Priya is lovely. I uh, I'm also I am. It is amazing to see the fan response to her character. Um, I think it's actually incredibly sweet, and it's testament to what a fine performer she is. She really is plays one of the most evil characters I've ever had the displeasure of interacting with on camera with. And you know what? To be able to generate that much empathy for her character, that mm. speaks volumes as to what a brilliant performer Lana is. She really is magical, and I think she's lovely. Uh, she's had me over to her house. Uh, she's She's been gracious. She had us all over. We had a nice big function uh, around se uh, beginning of season two. Um, she's incredibly sweet on set. Um, she's amazing. She's a huge fan. I'm also an evil regal. I love Lana. <laughs> Munchie's an evil regal. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like Snow White very much. She loves Ginny, but she doesn't like Snow White. Well, yeah, it's an interesting show. We're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing a lot, a lot of younger people prefer the evil people to the good ones. <laughs> Which... She loves the dwarfs, though. Oh. She thinks the dwarfs should switch sides and work with the evil queen. <laughs> well, if you gave us more lines, we might do that. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend Trish, she's got a few questions for you. Sure. Um, uh, she's, she wants to know, did you ever think that you would get to play one of Snow White's dwarfs? I didn't. And I, you know what? It's funny. I, um, I, I'm a huge fan of Disney. I grew up watching Uncle Walt on Sunday nights on, on, on the Disney show. And uh, I, visit, I go to Disneyland several times a year. I'm a huge fan. Um, so... And I remember when they were first casting this series, I actually wasn't brought in as an option for the first several reads. They literally read everybody in town. And when they couldn't find anybody else, they finally invited me to audition. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know if I drank the right glass of water that day or what it was, but uh, the stars aligned and I got to play a, a, a role of a lifetime. That's amazing. So do you have a favorite... Um Disney film? I do. I uh, Firstly, I do love every film. There's there's rarely a Disney film I don't love, um, but I'd say The Little Mermaid is my favorite. Oh, Robin Hood's mine. It's... I had a thing for foxes when I was little. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so Trish wants to know also, if you could be any other character in Once Upon a Time, who would you want to be? Mm, maybe any other character once upon a time it's a good question um huh. <laughs> i actually don't know i actually really like playing happy um and i love everybody else so much in the role they are i don't think i could i don't think i could um you know what right now prince eric hasn't been cast so maybe in the world of mashups maybe happy is also prince eric and has a love story with the little mermaid that i wouldn't hate I would not. How cool all. would that be? That that would be really. Have you pitched that idea yet? No, we're pitching this live right now, and we're going to need to send a copy of this to Adam and Eddie and make sure that they know that that can work its way into the story. Okay, we will do that. We we will t get everybody to tweet it at them. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. If, uh, if I make out with question. Mermaid, if I make out with the Little Mermaid in season three, I'll be thinking of all of you. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, Trisha's last question is, um, what's your favorite fairy tale story? Favorite fairy tale story. It's a good one. Favorite fairy tale. Huh. I keep wanting to think of something else. <laughs> I keep going back to the three little pigs. I don't know if that qualifies, but I think it really is my favorite. <laughs> I've always had like a thing for short stocky dudes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. <laughs> so if people are going to think I've got Tinkerbell in here with the puppy. Uh, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> she was beating a broom around just now. <laughs> okay, I, I'm a massive gator, and I've noticed that you've been in both Stargate and Atlantis. I so I'd love to know what your favorite memories of that experience would be. Um, yeah. You know what I have? I do have some favorite memories. So first of all, to be in Stargate SG-1 was amazing. It was super fun. Um, the cast and crew were amazing. It was one of the most fun days I had on set. But the one I really loved was getting to do Stargate Atlantis. So when I did Stargate Atlantis, I remember not knowing who else was in the episode. And when I sat down in the chair... The gentleman who sat next to me was Bill Nye, the science guy, and I'm a huge fan of Bill Nye, and I had the loveliest day with Bill Nye, who's amazing. We also, in that episode, had uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is the, uh, the guy who killed Pluto as a planet, which is no small feat in itself. Uh, and then we also had Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. Um, he was in the episode and of course Jewel State who was uh, in that series as well so I had scenes with her so it's like and I, I remember loving her from Firefly and Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall and Bill Nye the Science so it was like one of these things I wasn't sure if I could remember all my words I was just stuck with all these amazing individuals that I love so I, I love both that I have every DVD of SG1 in Atlanta really? <laughs> big fan big fan <laughs> I love it no I uh I, Stargate was one of the coolest things to get to be a part of. That's an amazing franchise. Mm, epic. It's a shame they cancelled everything. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it's interesting. I'm, uh, I'm currently right now, I'm working with um, one of the characters from, I'm just trying to remember which Stargate it was here. I'm just looking it up really quickly. <laughs> Stargate Universe. Did you ever see any of that? I did see some of them. The girl who plays Lieutenant Vanessa James is uh, played by Julia Benson. I'm actually writing a movie with her right now. Oh, wow. How cool. And we're going to have, um, it looks like we'll be casting some of the actors from Battlestar Galactica, Stargate, Once Upon a Time. So it'll be this whole mashup of all these various sci-fis and fantasy TV series. And we're all going to oh, match together and do one feature film. Oh, that will be absolutely amazing. You have to keep me posted on that one. I will. I'll keep you uh, up to date as we go. Okay, you've done a lot of um, sci-fi, like uh, Eureka, Smallville, Supernatural, uh, Mega Man, X-Men Evolution. So are you a sci-fi fan? I am definitely a sci-fi fan. Uh, I'm a little more old school. Um, I'm more Star Trek and uh, original Star Wars when it comes to that sort of thing. But yes, um, and I do like the new stuff. You know, I, again, like I'm a huge Firefly flan fan. Um, I like a lot of the stuff that's happened. Um, there was a great sci-fi series that never got enough love and attention called Space Above and Beyond that I'm still dying to have somebody pick up and do over again. I thought it was amazing. Uh, yes, I'm a huge sci-fi, huge sci-fi nut. <laughs> Uh, so, um, this is from Angie again. How did you transition from stand-up comedy and improv field over to acting and voice acting? That's actually interesting. I, You know what? Um, so, I started doing uh, comedy when I was in high school, and I was too young to be in the clubs. So, I'd have to sneak in the back door, do my set, and sneak out the back door before anybody could bust me. Um, I got a chance to work on stage with people like Robin Williams and all these other great, iconic, uh, comedic legends. Um, but there was one night where I was in the, uh, I was up on stage and I was doing some very risque stand up and, um, a gentleman in the crowd approached me afterwards and said I was the most, uh, insane person he'd ever met, uh, and asked if I was in film and TV. I said, no. And he said, you know what? You have to be, you just, you have to be, I'm calling my agent. You've got to be in TV shows and movies. I'm not going to sleep well if you're not. So he, he set it all up. It was this amazing actor named Michael Sunchak, who, uh, yeah, who I'm incredibly thankful for to this very day. Wow, that, that, that's, yeah. that's a cool page. <laughs> There's another fellow actor in a, in a crowd at a comedy show I was doing who went above and beyond and uh, bridged a connection. So. <laughs> what would you say are the most fun and challenging aspects of doing acting versus the voice acting? Um, well, with the voice acting, you have to tell the whole story just with your voice. So it's actually really difficult to do that. Like when, when you're on camera, you get the benefit of your body, your physicalization, your eyes. Also with voice acting, often we're all by ourselves. So on camera, you're always with other actors, um, where in the voice room, sometimes you are, sometimes you aren't. So they both present different challenges. Voice acting happens a lot faster 
on camera acting takes forever to get anything done, um, but it also gives you a lot more time to do things. So there's pros and cons to both. Then you get to wear pajamas if you're voicing, right? You absolutely do. I uh, I dress horrifically. I am not a good dresser when I do voice acting. <laughs> That's very comfortably. Very comfortably. <laughs> Uh, have you always lived in Vancouver? Uh, I've lived in Los Angeles and Vancouver for my entire life. A life. So um, I do have a house here. Um, so my roots are here in Vancouver. But um, part of the life of being a professional actor is you kind of live where the work is. So, so I live in Vancouver today, and I don't know where I live tomorrow. Yeah, Angie's question again. Sure. Who is your favorite character that you've ever played? Huh. Hmm. Good question. Um, I think Happy is one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. I also, there's a kids' TV show called Level Up. It's about these kids that have real life video games that interact in the world. And I play uh, this evil sidekick. That was kind of cool. Um, I don't get to play evil very often. So uh, I think that chance to be evil was a lot of fun. Um, I love everything, though. Like, I liked being one of the X-Men. I loved being a hamster in this show we did called Hamtaro, this little cartoon we did. Um, it's a lot of... I like. I loved being a pizza dude in Eureka. He was just... Like, he was just such an idiot. Uh, like, when you get paid to be the idiot on set and just disrupt everything, it's hard to know what's scripted and when Michael Coleman, the actor, is just being an idiot. Uh, so that was one of the most fun I, I had. And if anybody ever busted on me, I just say I'm improving or I'm ad-libbing <laughs> I don't know. It was a lot of fun. Three, four, four, four. <laughs> nice. Um, so you've um, got a an acting school that you're involved with. I do, yeah. I started an acting school several years ago and wanted to create the kind of place that I wish I would have had when I was starting out. So I've been very fortunate. I've got... Um, Lots of the Once Upon a Time cast have come in and either worked as guest speakers or guest uh, instructors. Um, I have some of them as regular teachers here. Granny teaches here. Uh, Fairy Godmother te teaches here. Stealthy the Eighth Dwarf teaches here. King Midas teaches here. So we've got a whole bunch of them. Um, Balefire comes in and has run a few classes. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good situation. Grumpy's always around. Um, Little Red Riding Hood. So it's fun. It's fun. Awesome. Um, so, so you, you teach there as well? I do. I do. Um, I teach here. Um, I do most of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. So a lot of the classwork is done by the other coaches. And then when actors have auditions for film or television, often they'll come to me and we'll work one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. So is it just for voice acting or does it cover everything? It covers uh, film acting, television acting, voiceover acting, and theater acting. Yeah, it's called Vancouver Acting School, and it's just VancouverActingSchool.com if anybody ever wants to check it out. I can put some links up if you like. Sure, that'd be wonderful. Excellent. Uh, so what's your favorite aspect of the convention circuit? Hmm. It's, a mixed, it's a mixed thing. One of my favorite things, one of the things I love about doing live theater is the instant connection you have with the audience. So when you provide a, 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 um, an artistic experience, you have the instant um, reaction from the crowd and we don't get that and while it's not an instant reaction it's always amazing to see like when we're working on Once Upon a Time or any other sci-fi show or cartoon you have no idea if anybody's ever going to watch it and then you have no idea what they like or hate so I do love the chance to go to fan conventions and have people you know dress like the show so much that they'll dress up like your characters or they'll know things or they'll notice things you did in the scene that you're like hey the director didn't even notice that I did that that's awesome <laughs> that's fantastic. so it's really cool to connect with them that way and I also really really like um, interacting with the other guests like it's a chance to meet other actors from other shows and um, you know, a lot of times all these other actors, everybody watches each other's show, and it's kind of neat for us, too, to hang out. I was at a fan convention recently where I had lunch with Boba Fett and Darth Vader. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, that's a neat thing to do. Uh, that's <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's my childhood there. Yeah. Right, right there. <laughs> um, so are the um, anime convention fans different to, like, Once Upon a Time fans? Huh. Yeah. Yes and no. Um, the anime fans are lovely and sweet, and I adore them. They are uh, 
they love their anime at such a crazy level. Um, it's beautiful, uh, and I'm sure the Once Upon a Timers and the Sci-Fi guys will will eventually get there. Um, I just find them so fanatical. It's amazing to see how much they know and love. He wants you to tell us your best joke. Mm. <laughs> My best joke. Well, you said you like challenges. It's true. I do. I just I have two, and none of them are very funny. Um, I. My favorite joke um, for my daughter, who is only 20 months old, is um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? Uh, psh. Psh. <laughs> I, I told Munchie, uh, uh, what do you call a fly with no wings? A walk. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's good. That's good. I might steal that one as a follow-up to my fish joke. What do you call a spider with no legs? A current. <laughs> Very pathetic. I love it. <laughs> and of course, Munchie's really into the dinosaurs, so she came up to me the other day and said, what do you call a dinosaur who never has a bath? I don't know. Extinct. That's really good. That's good. You made that up yourself. I was very proud. <laughs> That's pretty good. So what, what kind of music are you into? Um, I literally like all kinds. And I know that sounds like such a cop-out, but I do. Like, I like to think my life is like this epic movie. I like to think that I'm in, like, the Truman Show. And there's different parts of my life that require different parts of the soundtrack. So... I like, I, there's very little I don't like. Um, I can honestly, in the right mood, any music can strike me as appropriate. Awesome. I do, do you have a I sing a lot of Disney songs while I'm in the show. That is, uh, that is something that probably shouldn't be shared, but it is true. <laughs> I love it. I've I absolutely love it. I've borrowed soap a whole new world many a times. Do you want to give us a few bars? I will not do that. No, not put a shower. I need the acoustics of the shower, and I'm not sure if that would be appropriate for this Skype cast. No, probably not. <laughs> do, do you have a favorite band? A favorite band? You know what? My favorite band of all time is the Beatles. Awesome. Favorite band. Mm. I'm a Paul McCartney guy. Michael? Yes? You have a very good happy tour. She said you make a really, really good happy draw. Oh, well, thank you. You are happy. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That was really funny. Like, Go on. I don't, I don't really like the character Snow White. I prefer the, I prefer the real Snow White. Because they look more 3 d <laughs> Okay, so she prefers Ginny Snow White over an animation of Snow White. Because she prefers it in 3D. Me too, me too. Me, like uh, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> oh dear. I have some uh, hockey questions from fans. Oh, of course. I know. I know nothing about hockey. <laughs> um, why are Vancouver Canucks your favorite hockey team? Um, because I was born and raised in Vancouver, and it's my home team. And I love the style of hockey that we play. I love, love, love our style of hockey. I'm, I'm going to take your word on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and who's your favorite player? My favorite player right now? Mm -hmm. My favorite player right now is a gentleman by the name of Sidney Crosby. He plays for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he is the best player to come out of Canada since Wayne Gretzky. Okay. I should have looked this up, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So your IMDb resume says that you play hockey four times a week. I do. Um, when do you play? I play center forward. I am a playmaking guy up the middle who wins a lot of face-offs. <laughs> Which I know means nothing to you, but it's quite valuable on a hockey team, I tell you. It's very important to have people like me on your team. And I'm also chirpy. I like to talk a lot of trash on the ice. <laughs> Having a person like me on your team is not a bad thing. I mean, okay, if I ever play hockey, I will call you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I'll try to say this right. <laughs> what is special to you about Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals? Mm, that one just hurts. Uh, <laughs> oh, what is special to me about... Oh. Well, what's special is that my team has had a chance to win Stanley Cup uh, Game 7 uh, opportunities three times in our life, and we've never done it. My team has never won the Stanley Cup, and we've had three chances, to, or twice to do it, um, or once to do it in a Game 7, um, and uh, we've had a couple chances. Wow. Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals is the most important event in the history of man. Any person who gets to be placed in a Game 7 of a Stanley Cup championship, you have been blessed beyond measure, and you are one of the chosen ones. It's the most beautiful experience anybody could ever experience. Okay, I do apologize. I'm about that question. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was given that question. <laughs> I love it. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Are you uh, good at impressions? Uh, no, I'm. I am. I am, in fact, so bad at impressions that I do countless impressions, claim them as original voices, which is what gave me my voiceover career. All of my voices that I do are just really terrible impressions. <laughs> terrible. Okay, then we'll strike out the one where someone asked me to do an impression of somebody. <laughs> What's the, what was that last one? <laughs> I'm wondering if you could do an impression of anybody. <laughs> I didn't get that again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they were wondering if you could do an impression of somebody for us. Oh, just do an impression of anybody. Anyone, anything. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are putting me on the spot. Um. <laughs> very versatile, having directed film and having written many pilot movie scripts, and you're a film editor. What is your secret to being so good at so many different things? Mm. I drink a very special juice called Awesome Juice. <laughs> now, I, um, you Can know, I have some? <laughs> yes, yeah, everybody's welcome to it. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for the kind words. I, I spent a lot of time working and learning. And I think one of the reasons I get to do what I do is that I have committed myself to being a student of the craft of storytelling for a lifetime. So I've been working for a very long time, but I've also been learning for a very long time, and I have no desire to stop learning. And I think that's the key. I think it's when we get complacent, when we get uh, comfortable with where we are, that we start to slip and slide. So my commitment to being better every day, I think, allows me the opportunities I get. Okay. Very humble. Okay, and the, the last question I have on the paper is, uh, what is your favorite book? My favorite book is a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's fantastic. I could read that every day, all day. I think it's bloody brilliant. I love it. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Um, not unless you have any other burning questions, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't have any no, more questions. I've had a lovely time, uh, and you guys definitely caught me off guard a few times, and I always love that. It's fun. Yeah, and like I said, if you if you need me for anything else, just give me a shout. I will. I'll keep you updated with this uh, movie that we've got in the works here. It sounds fantastic. I'm really excited. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. We'll talk again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.